Hi everyone, welcome back to AFTV and welcome to Full Time. We've got a 4-1 win against Leeds to discuss and break down. Now normally this show is obviously about you guys sending in your videos to AFTV, but we can't today for obvious reasons. We're all working from home, we're all having to um, yeah, make do with what we can at the moment because of the um, pandemic situation, isolation. But we are here still to discuss an impressive win. And Arsenal, the last three games, have impressed me. Um, I'll even hold my hands up and say I've probably been looking for too much out of certain performances at times. But you've got to say that, what's that? Two, three and four. So that's nine goals in the last three games. Um, two clean sheets in there. It really should have been another today. But Arsenal have really turned things around a little bit since Everton. Um, I say a little bit. Because we've seen Arsenal show these mini runs or whatever. Um, but today was really good. And we're going to take your comments. We're going to read them out. We're going to just discuss it for the next half hour or so. To go through sort of moment by moment, moment by moment game um, through the game. Uh, we should have Lee and Turkish joining us at some point. They're just doing their fan cams and they will come and discuss it as well. So let's get straight into it. Let's just see if there are any comments that go through. Um Nkwanga says, Saka, man of the match. I thought he was very good. Not my man of the match, but he was very good. Captain T says, Laka, no goal, but so important. Um, yeah, that I, I think that's a very good word of um, sum it up. Um, S Man Stay says, James, you can do a post-match interview. I will do a, a, a fan cam after. Yeah, of course. Uh, Jeremiah asking, how old is James? I'll let you guess. I'll let you guess how old I am. But I've said it like a thousand times on this channel. Um, super chat. From Greg Livingston says North London, <coughs> North London is red and always be red. I think I agree with that. Ilias says I think Odegaard was <coughs> was brilliant. Agree with that. TGT um, Odegaard man of the match. Um, Esman Stay says James is twenty four to twenty five. You're really not far off. Um, someone thinks thirty nine. Fair enough. Um, right, let's talk about the game. You really don't need to spam the comments with guesses about how old I am. Um, Anthony says, buy Eve Basuma. Yeah, he'd, he'd be a great player. But I think the midfield's doing its thing at the moment. Um, just see if there's anything else. Saka is gold. I agree with that. Um, Michael says, Xhaka trolling everyone. The guy was the guy was very good today. I, I, I thought he could have been sent off, if I'm honest. But glad he didn't. Um, AS says, I'm really getting tired of Turkish and James. Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't want to say to that. Um, Let's go into it. Let's get into it. Arsenal put four pass leads today in what was a really weird game because there were points where you thought this does feel too easy um, and leads weren't very good. And I think I want to talk about what Arsenal did brilliantly today because I think they deserve a lot of credit. And I think for youngsters to be scoring and contributing this regularly in the Premier League um, at this stage of the season when it's game after game, you know, let's not take anything away from what Smith, Rowe, Saka, Odegaard, Martinelli are doing. They are, the, the the four of them have been absolutely terrific the last, I'm going to say the last couple of games, but in patches, they've all been terrific over the last year. Um, and, it, and you know, we've got four really special players. And before we go into all that, because we are going to discuss them, of course we are. Um, and we are going to talk about Martinelli, as you can see from the, the title of this video. Um, I think we do need to just have a word on Leeds. Now, Leeds, I think, are a good side with a very, very good manager. I think Bielsa is a very good manager. I know a lot of people say, yeah, but Bielsa Bulls a myth and all that. I, I think they're I think they're a good side. And I think Leeds will stay up. I think they'll get a few players in, in January. They'll get a few players back from injury. And I think they'll do enough to just put points on the board, get wins and stay in the division. But today they were an absolute shambles. I know that Bielsa's way is man mark across the pitch. I know it's about an intense press. I know it's about fluid football, kind of um, everything goes football a little bit, you know, and and sometimes that does give them a performance like Stamford Bridge where they should have got something out of the game. Sometimes it gives you a 7-0 against Man City. Sometimes it gives you a half like today where Arsenal could have been 7-0 up a half time. I'm not even joking. But then in the second half, I wouldn't say they were the better side. Arsenal were in control, but but they looked like they could do something. Um, so I so I think Leeds will be fine, but they were an absolute even for the players they're missing. And I said this in them, um, I said this in the starting eleven show that actually when you look at that Leeds eleven that went out, I recognised every player. You know, those are players that yeah might not be starters, but will be playing throughout the season for Leeds. Um, you know, Jack Harrison, Tyler Roberts, and Rafinha behind. Gelhart, who's a, who's a very talented young player. 
um you know there was some there was recognizable talent and quality there and they're the average age of their side was still older than ours by a year i think so i i thought Leeds would cause us more problems i thought they'd be better than this and i think it's more the system and their decision to follow everyone around the pitch their man marking um that really cost them today and i and i've got to say i, I thought that was borderline shambolic from bielsa and, and i know that it's the same you know the way he deploys those tactics are what's going to get Leeds, you know, good wins that you wouldn't expect is what's going to score Leeds four or five goals every now and again away from home or whatever, because it's the same way. And and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, especially with the, the quality of player they've got. And I know they're missing some huge players, but I didn't think today was the day for it. And I'm really glad Arsenal put them to the sword and said, you can't do that against us. And I'm glad because Liverpool, City... They would have done that. I was going to say Chelsea, but Chelsea were made to work really hard against them, um, you know, not so long ago. But but the, but Liverpool and City would have done that to Leeds today, and I'm glad that we did it because that's the level. That's the level you've got to get to, and I'm glad that when the expectation was on us to do it, we did it. So well played to Arsenal. Uh, that's what I say on Leeds. I thought they were really poor, but we still had a job to do, and we did it. Um, Super chat from Curtis says. Always saw the potential of Martinelli, but these last few games, he showed us he's a superstar. I agree. He's got super. He's got superstar potential. I I read some of the comments. Um, I read some of the comments when people are a little critical or trolling or whatever. So just thank you very much to people saying allow Turkish and James. Thank you, Marley. Appreciate that. Joe having a bit of fun says, "Oh my god, he coughed. Let's all run and hide." <laughs> um, yeah, very funny. And Andrew saying, "James, you're awesome. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that." Uh, we've got a super chat from Touch of Awesome says, "Holding went over to the sideline ref to complain about Leeds fans shouting racist comments at the Arsenal bench. When will it stop?" Okay, um, I didn't know that. So. Um, fair play to Rob Holding. I'm going to look into what that and see what happened. I've, I'm not seen. I've been scrolling through Twitter. I've not seen a mention of that. Um, so if y y I mean, fair play to Rob Holding. Fair play to Rob Holding for stepping up and um, yeah, being a leader in that situation. You know, that's I've always said on the pitch. I'm not sure, but I imagine he's part of the leadership group for a reason. So yeah, let's um, let's go into more stuff. Um, around the Arsenal game. Ben saying Leeds robbed. I'm not sure about that. Captain C C T says Xhaka stays forever. Um, a few people talking about uh, Xhaka and Abaming and all that. Let's go into the game. Um, Arteta starts with a unchanged 11, not to be surprised. I mean, it was a surprise when he picked it against Southampton on the back of Everton, um, but not a surprise today. And he's shown his faith in this group and this particular 11, and they've really stepped up for him. What I like about this 11... There's a real balance to it. Um, now, our system against United uh, and the games before that, we had Smith Rowe on the left and Tavares as the left back. Don't get me wrong. I love them both. And they were doing really, really well together. Um, it's a very different partnership to what you have on the right with Saka and Tomiyasu. Smith Rowe's role off the left is to come inside and basically be like a, a left side in number 10. And Odegaard is the number 10, drifts to the right and becomes the right side in number 10. And Lacazette or Aubameyang will be dropping in as well. The idea is that it encourages, um, it encourages Tierney to, uh, it's not Tierney, Tavares to bomb on and hold the width and have that space to attack. Now, I really like that. And at times it works. But with Tierney and Martinelli, you've got a slight better combination i know tinny doesn't go inside as much as tavares but he also doesn't need to go forward as much um and what you have is martinelli at times just drifting wide taking on players on the outside on the inside there's a really nice balance to it so yeah he stuck with that 11 for this game today and i thought arsenal um after a, a nervy minute or two actually leeds came out okay they 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 you know ben white with a misplaced pass they they got into our area they win a corner arsenal just didn't you know, you can succumb to five, ten minutes of pressure sometimes with that, where you think, okay, this is a bit more of an awkward start than we expected, so let's just kind of manoeuvre the situation. In fact, Arsenal just got on the ball very quickly and started playing their football, and I think a big reason is because Leeds tried to chase us all around the pitch, and Arsenal just knocked it around. You, you have technicians like Saka, very good at getting to the ball just before you think he's going to, but he just nicks it. Jack Wilsh had that, had that um, ability too. 
Um, Odegaard, again, very, very nippy kind of quick feed, gets away from situations that you think, oh, he's in trouble here, but he gets away from it. Um, Martinelli, the same. Lacazette, very good at that. Lacazette, I always say this, Lacazette gets criticised for being a little bit of a lump up front. He's not. He's a lot more mobile than people give him credit for. He's also got quicker feet than people give him credit for. He's actually good at just getting his body there, getting in the way. And so we were playing around the Leeds press. We were starting to have chances. Odegaard threads a lovely ball into Lacazette. And he did that twice. I'm going to mention the second time later on. But he had those moments where he was picking out little passes that he thought, oh, OK, I was expecting you to go for that ball, but he did. Lacazette really should have scored and Saka really should have scored. But we get away with that. But I did tweet, you know, how do you miss that? And I, I think it was poor from Lacazette and Saka in that moment, not the build up, the movement and all that. That was very good. But you've got to take those chances. Luckily, Arsenal did in the end. Uh, Michael, with the comment says Spurs have pressure and will have strong fixture congestion. I agree. I do think that could be a factor. Uh, but obviously, we don't know how this is. You know, they, they've been knocked. I think, I think it's confirmed they're out the the Europa Conference League, so they should have midweek, you know, midweeks to play those games. Um, but you know, again, they probably wouldn't want that. I mean, either way, the, the fixtures congested now. So, yeah, well, who knows how that will play out? Uh, Jeremiah with super chat says, "I know it's early, but apart from a striker, which position do you think needs strengthening in January? I think central midfield still, um, and I dare say." It's come as a bit of a surprise to others. I dare say a winger. I still think we need someone. Saka's adding it to his game, and Saka is doing tremendously well. I still think we need a Rafinha type in our team. If we could go get Rafinha from Leeds, I'd be delighted because he's so unpredictable. He can go left and right. Um, you feel even if his team's having a bad game or he's having a bad game, he can make something happen. Um I really, really like Rafinha. And I, I think a winger and a central midfielder. If I'm getting priority, I think striker, central midfielder, winger. And I'll add to that, you know, that Lukonga and Saka are the future and, and they look terrific in those positions. Balogun maybe as well. But we can't always rely on these guys. We need to give them some help. And I think where Martinelli, Odegaard and Saka have been able to flourish, maybe a little bit more in recent games, is actually because you've got experience, stability behind, in part in Xhaka behind, and you've got Lacazette up front, who's doing his job so well. And I think it helps those three flourish. And, and again, you've got Tierney who's bombing on it. Left. There's just a little bit more experience around them, despite it still being a very young side. Um, Omphile says, everyone is experiencing Omicron. Arteta's discipline is a reason we still have a complete squad. It showed today. Um, yeah, I'm going to take exception to that comment and just say I, I think it's more luck than anything. Um, I don't know. I don't know if Arteta's putting in anything particularly strict behind the scenes when it comes to, um, you know, how much they're allowed to socialise or go out or anything. I think it's just bad luck. And I trust that every professional footballer is being as professional as they can. And it's just bad luck, um, the, the pandemic situation. But obviously we are... Um, benefiting from the Premier League not having called things off and us being able to just carry on with games and putting points on the board while we're in, in good form. So, yeah. Let's see if there are any more Super Chats and comments. Hilma says we need a deadly striker. KPR says we should sign Renato Sanchez. I'd love Renato Sanchez. Um, do you know, it does make me laugh. My little, little dig, little dig at Arsenal. It's funny how we lose games and... Suddenly, we want to sign Dominic Calvert-Lewin. We want to sign Renato Sanchez. And this is all in the media, right? Wijnaldum, all this is in the media. We win a couple, we don't hear anything. And I think, um, yeah, I think that uh, I think that might just be the puppeteers just sort of, I don't know, trying to play with our moods a little bit. I mean, why not? When lose, why not release a bit of transfer information? Um, AFC Cape Town says, I have a better idea, James. Let's talk about Arsenal. Yeah, I agree. I think we are, to be fair, but uh, let's talk about that first goal. We talked about the missed opportunity for Saka and Lacazette. Um, this first goal I really like because there's some really nice football. It breaks down and then Lacazette shows why he is the best striker Arsenal have for what we want to do in this Arteta system. And he goes and he presses and he closes him down immediately. He gets a foot in. Lacazette's a very good tackler. He doesn't give away that many fouls. He's very good at using his body right, getting around the man, getting a toe in. 
Uh, he's also very good at looking after the ball. In those duels, he is very, very good, um, Lacazette. And I think we're about to bring in Lee Judge in one sec. So I look forward to getting his thoughts on this. Um, but, you know, what he does, Lacazette keeps this alive. He keeps it alive. And Martinelli just senses that opportunity. He knows if Lacazette wins this, it's going to drop there. And, and he just hits the target. He puts a little bit. People, it looks like a place finish, and it is. But I think what, what Martinelli does really well, he goes, right, the, the keeper's not got a lot of time to react to this. So we just put enough on it. Let me just hit an area of the goal, and it's more likely going in. And he does really well, and it's 1-0 to the Arsenal. A really good goal. Then we've got Lee Judges. Let's bring him in, get his thoughts on that Arsenal first goal, which really kind of settled the game, I think. I think it really... Have we got Lee Judges? I think he's in the background waiting, so I think we're looking to bring him in ASAP. Um, but Martinelli, and that's the player we want to talk about today because he gets that first goal and he has really, really benefited from the game time recently. Um, from the time he's had out to come in, he looks fresh, he's got bags of energy, he's setting the tone for Arsenal, he looks a real goal threat. Um, he, he's he been absolutely terrific. I think even in the games at Old Trafford and Goodison, where Arsenal was struggling, he looked one of our better players. Um, just finding out if we can get Lee Judges in here. Not sure what's going on. Um, might be a technical fault. We've got anything? Production, any news on Lee Judges? Oh, here he is. Hello, go. Lee. There we go. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you just fine. How are you? Yeah, fantastic. Buzzing after that today. Really, really well pleased with that. Oh, I'm buzzing too. I'm buzzing too. I want to talk about Martinelli, um, yeah. especially because he gets the first and second goal. Um, just a reminder of that second goal. It's lovely from Granite Xhaka. Um, yeah. Arsenal go from one end of the pitch to the other very quickly. Martinelli again with that movement that we've seen. We saw it with the goal against Newcastle. We see it with the goal against um, against West Ham. And then again, he... You know, he makes that run from from fullback to centre back um, to get himself in on goal. So lovely ball from Xhaka. Let's let's talk about Martinelli because he's he's a, he's up there with Smith Rowe and Saka. Some will argue even better, but let's just talk about them as a as a terrific collective. Mm. Different he's players. What player. I like about all three of them, they're all different. You know, all mm. different, they've got different attributes, but all all quality young players. But the biggest attribute for me for for Martinelli is he's clinical with his finishing. And his pace takes him there, gives him that little bit of extra time. In fact, the second goal, I've just had a look at it there. He, he, his first touch isn't the greatest. No, it's not. He's got enough pace then to, to get onto it. And then the the, the, the the actual finish for the goal is sublime. So he's got that little bit of pace that gets him um, out of trouble a little bit, you know. Uh, but listen, one of the best things you can have as attributes as a forward is pace, movement and finishing. He's got all yeah. three. He's got all three. So uh, the one thing that he hasn't got yet, is power, um, which will come, you know what I mean? Because he's 20 years of age, you know, you imagine what he's going to be like when he's 24, 25. So, um, and uh, I just think that he's going to get better and better. The, the greatest thing that I think that I, I like about him, and it's an obvious one really, James, is that he, he can finish and he's clinical. Two chances today, two goals. The most important goals, if I'll be honest today, they were the two the two goals that were important. That puts us in a good position. And he's took them really, really well. You know, as you say, Granite Shacker, I thought had a good game today, doesn't get probably won't get the credit he deserves for that pass. But then, you know, it's all about Martinelli after that. And and two great finishes. And um I have to say I'm I'm buzzing about the performance and the result today. And of course, because it is those three youngsters. And look, listen, people have been crying out for those players to be playing up front yeah. for a while. But I will say this, Udegaard today was fantastic. I thought yeah, he, was, yeah. he was fantastic in that role as well. So I'm going to count him as well. That four attacking players were, were, were really, really good. Lacazette, I thought, played really, really well today. The only thing that I would say, let him down a little bit, was his finishing today. But other than that, you know, you'd have to say another fantastic performance. He's the one that knits it all together, brings it all. He's the glue for the, he is the glue for the for the three or four exciting player that we've got, you know, in Martinelli, Oligard, uh, Smith Rowe and Saka. So we've got you know, he's the glue for all them four. Fantastic. And I'll tell you what, not a bad person to learn off because, you know, he's got good attitudes, works hard as well, like, you know, and he's a team player. So uh no, all in all, that's a great that's a great night's work, James. Great night. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I um 
I think we definitely got to talk about Odegaard. And I mentioned his lovely through ball to Lacazette for that first chance at the very beginning of the game. I want to talk about him a little bit later. So we should have you still on at that point. But let's, um, on Martinelli, um, what he does, he always makes the run. Like he's thinking about where the goal is. Now, I know that sounds silly. Sometimes in football, you can do things that look pretty. You can play passes because they look good. Or you can you can run into certain space to receive the ball because you're just going to receive it there. Or whatever. You can do things that actually don't always aid the team. And when I look at Guardiola, I think I'll test quite a bit about this as well, about him as well. Everything about Guardiola and the football he wants to play is about doing things with a purpose. You know, why are you making that run? Why are you going there? And Martinelli's runs and the positions he picks up, that you know where he stands waiting for the ball, it's all with the purpose of getting as close to goal as possible so that he can score. Mm. And and you see that with his first goal. You see that with his second goal. And I remember when he signed, he said his role model was Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, look, he'll do, he'll do very well to get even to half the level of Cristiano Ronaldo because we're talking one of the greatest of all time. But you can see where Martinelli is like he, where his brain is tuned, you know, it's, can I get goals? And he doesn't do it in a selfish way. He doesn't do it to the detriment of the team. His just movement is so bloody clever and where he expects the ball and anticipates the ball to pop up, you know, is, is, is that of a goal scorer? Yeah. And, 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 and not only that, James, a world-class striker, I think that he's going to be, I think, you know, I'm, I'm excited about um, Martinelli like I was when I first seen Nicholas and Elka. That's the sort of uh, way it can be, you know. And Elka was that that pace and that um, uh, skill level as well that really excited me to watch him, like, you know. And yeah. Martinelli's got that. But, he, you know, you're right what you're saying. It, it's all designed to get him on goal. And when he gets on in goal, in, in, he knows he's got the pace to keep away from players. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, um, he's as fast as everybody, but he knows that what he does, his pace gets him that yard, that gives him the time to to breathe, take the shot off, like you know, and and and, yeah. and finish, and that's what he does, and he does it so well. But he's got skill, and and what what he's got, I, I think that sometimes, and I, and I'm not having a go at for other players, you know, he, he he's clever, he's clever with what he does, as you say, he's very very clever with his movement. He's an intelligent footballer as well. I think that's probably what I'm alluding to. He knows he knows what he needs to do and when to do it, but he's not. He's not prepared to just sit out on the flank waiting for it to happen. He's looking to movement. Sometimes he, he I, I think what I like about him as well, I think that he appreciates sometimes that he has to um, make a run, which is going to benefit a teammate, you know. So he, he, he knows he's not going to get the ball, but he's willing to make that powerful run so that, it, you, you know, it's not a gestured run. It's a powerful mm. run that's going to take him in there, which may give a little bit more space for Ulugar or even Tierney coming down the flank there. So he's unselfish in, in his running. He's unselfish in his play. But when he gets in front of goal, he's then selfish. So that's a very, very good thing to have. Yeah, I agree. Bakaya Saka then gets the third goal. Actually, just before we, we move on, there was a super chat from Sam that says, how many points do you think we can get between now and City? So what does that include? Norwich away, Wolves at home? Six. Is that it? Six. I said all along, we, after we lost to Everton, we had to beat Southampton, uh, West Ham, Leeds, Wolves going into that game. 12 points. We're on course to do that now, you know, when we've got a, a Norwich. So we've got another another two games, which I expect, you know, when you look at Norwich, who are bottom of the league, they're, reason, they're bottom of the league for a reason. And then you've got um, uh, Wolves as well, which will be a tough game because they're not a bad side. Yeah. We're at home. So you expect to beat, beat them, but it won't be easy. All of a sudden, then you go into that Manchester City game with a little bit of confidence and a, and, a, and a chance to really go at them and give them a you know a game. Again, we're at the Emirates and we own in one. I don't, I don't, you know, what I mean, l- listen, people go to me, oh, that ain't good. Listen, when you're at home, we've got a chance. And listen, they beat Spurs. Spurs beat them. You know, they've got to be a little bit off on the day. But ultimately, if we play like that, I'll I tell you what, Carl Walker won't have it easy against Martinelli. And nor, and nor will their left back, whoever it'll be, like up against Saka. They won't have it easy. And that's what we want, you know. And and when we get a chance against him, it's be bloody ruthless and take it like, you know, and, and hopefully we will do. Yeah, I hear that. The coming games are um, obviously Sunderland in the, yeah, uh, the, well, the yeah. quarter final. 
Um, so hopefully that goes ahead. Obviously, we, everything's a little bit on standby at the moment, but we'll, we'll see. Um, it is scheduled to go ahead at the moment. Norwich away on Boxing Day. Wolves uh, at home on the 28th of December. We then play Man City um, at half 12. That's the mid, that's UK time. No. The midday kickoff on New Year's Day. That would be nice on a hangover. Uh, we then got Forest away in the FA Cup. Um, Spurs away in if North London Derby mid-January. Mm. Burnley at home. And then Wolves away comes back, comes around pretty quickly. Brentford at home. Oh, OK. No, so, sorry. Burnley at home is the last game of, of January. Then there's a bit of a break between then and the Wolves game. So I don't know if there's an international break or FA, oh, it's Cup. Probably F, FA Cup games. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fine. So, you know, the, the, the coming games as a kind of month or two coming, they don't look horrendous. There's a few in there, but you know, I'd expect Arsenal to do something at home to city. Cause I just always think Arsenal should do something at home. Um, the North London Derby. I think we should always be back in our team to do something though. It's away from home. Um, this can hopefully build some good momentum for Arsenal. Yeah, definitely. And that's what you we looking to do. And I, I think that, uh, you know, listen, there may be a little, a little hiccup in one of those games that you expect to win and all that. Lot, but, you yeah. know, we've had enough. We've had we've had our hiccups in the past. We, we can't afford to have these hiccups now. So I expect us to be really, really on it and solid. The good thing about us at the moment is that we've, we've got a, a squad that's, um, you know, um, injury free. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know, you look at Leeds today. You know, they're ravaged by injuries, you know, we, we, which we've had in the past, James. We've we've had to oh, deal, yeah. with, but we haven't got that at the moment. Is that because we're not playing week in, week out all the time? That there is that little bit more time to recover, which could benefit us. You know, I mean, we're not playing with niggles. We're having you know nice rests in between games. It's always said it's a little bit of an advantage. So we go into the, to these games, um, you, you know, in, in a good in 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 good you know, in, in good stead and, and, and also like, you know, you great call by you by today to say about Saka coming off, you know, we could even afford to rest him for a little while today. So all in all, we're in a very, very good position going forward to the, um, to get into the top four, I think like, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, uh, but right. it's not going to be easy. We, 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 we know that, um, but ultimately we've got a chance and I'm, I'm, I'm after that today, even if you're, um, uh, a big critic of um, a Mikel Arteta, and 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 you you, you you want him out, and there's a lot of people that are just not going to budge on that. You cannot, you know, they they come out today and probably say about the the Leeds game that you know there wasn't this and wasn't that. You can what he's done over these last three games. There's pressure on him. I I, I kid you not. After that Everton game, because I was gone with him. I I, I really was. But he's pulled in three good performances now. He can't do no more than that. It's going to take a lot more of that to say, right, yeah, I think that you're the man. But listen, why, what, are, what are fans not doing at the moment? They're not calling for his head like, why are they not calling for his head, James? He's won three games on the spin. Yeah, exactly. And done them in, in impressive in, in impressive. In impressive yeah, yeah, not, you can't be, you know, I've been entertained in the last two home games uh, at the Emirates. And you can't say that that weren't a good game from our point of view today. You know, I enjoyed that today. Yeah, no, uh, me too, yeah. I'll look, I'll, I'll, I'll I'm going out tonight, but I'll um I'll look forward to uh, match of the day and watching that um later on tonight and because it was entertaining as well, like you know, and, and when when yeah. the team's playing well and scoring goals like that, you it, it's nice, isn't it? You know, there's mm-hmm. no oh ifs and buts and oh well we haven't done this when you know when we beat Norwich one nil we didn't like, you feel there's a little sense of um togetherness and all that. But one thing I will say is this: keep it going, just. Keep it going, like you know. Yeah, absolutely. The third goal, obviously, Bukayo Saka, a little bit of a deflection, but um, three nil deserved. Ar- Arsenal could have had four, five, six in that first yeah. half. Honestly, the amount of chances, the amount of openings we created. Um, if anything, it was actually getting to the point where I was getting a little frustrated. We hadn't scored more. Don't get me yeah. wrong. You're not. You don't go three nil up at half time in the Premier League away from home and complain about it. But you, 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 you got to. I think a team with a little bit more um, familiarity with these situations and actually dominating games, having loads of chances, um, probably does get a few more. But that's my only little complaint, uh, you know, in what was otherwise a pretty faultless first half. Um, and then the second goal, Smith Rowe comes on, he wins the ball back. And then Odegaard, I, I mentioned at the beginning of this show, to everyone to remember just that pass he played to Lacazette in the first 
kind of minute or two. Lacazette should score. Saka should get the rebound. But Odegaard had another moment where you think he's going to play it wide to Martinelli and he plays a lovely little dinked ball into Smith Rowe. And you're thinking, that's exactly what I want my number 10 to do. Mm. Something I'm not expecting. To play the pass that I didn't see. You know, we're watching on the watch and we go, all right, okay, give it wider. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, we scored. And that's what you pay the money for, for a quality number 10. They do the things that we can't see naturally. We can't expect or whatever. And, and they blow you away in that way. And I thought Odegaard showed a lot of that today and has been showing it a little bit in recent weeks. But again, terrific. Another assist for him. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've always been a big fan of his. I've always said that. You know, I was surprised how old he was. I, I said a few weeks ago, people started getting on his back. I said, look, there's a player in there, like, you know, needs to be given a bit of time. And uh, I, I like his work rate as well, James. I think that's good. Yeah. He said, you know, I mean, he's not a lazy player. He's prepared. I think you actually I, I said on the watch along, look, look at him back there on the, in the right back spot. You know, you get players... Um, you know, that play that role and they go, oh, free role, oh, great. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he doesn't do it like that. There, there's a there's a work rate in there. There's industry in his game as well. And I like that. You know what I mean? Like, I like a player that's got a bit about him that can play and do all those sort of things, but it's got industry as well and work works hard. Um, and I, I think that if we, when the chips are down, I think he's one of those players that will push you. I'll always remember his performance against West Ham when we was 3-0 down. Took the game by the scruff of the neck and produced a, an outstanding and, and dragged us back to 3-3 mm. um, at the London Stadium. He I'll was never, terrific that day. I never forgot that performance. Um, so it's in his locker. Uh, today, he dictated a lot of that good play out there. But overshadowed, overshadowed because there's better performances probably, as we said, from from Martinelli and 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 also uh, Saka as well was outstanding. But listen, he was, I think, uh, close to, to the man of the match today. I also think that what what's helped him is you got Party and uh, uh, Shaka in front of him, so there's a little bit of uh, stability, you know, solid, solid solidness in front of that. So that he can 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 pick those pockets and play. So for me, outstanding performance room today, and 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 yeah, with the the, the lovely little f uh, pass at the end proved proved to be fantastic. Yeah, very true. Got a comment from Red says James, bro, I can't wait for this Amazon documentary to drop. We subconsciously mm. conclude so much from speculation. Many opinions will change, and Arteta's actions can be more appropriately judged. I do think they'll show us what they want to show us in the documentary, but then there's also stuff they can't just make up. No. Um, so I, I do think there, there are going to be some interesting things in that doc. Um, duh, 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 Christian says, this is the best analysis. AFTV are doing good. Thank you, Christian. I appreciate the support. Um, Tino still, despite today, says our midfield is still poor. Partey needs to be serious. I thought Partey was better today. You know, he's you can see he's not his best, but he is slowly going through the levels and the motions, isn't he? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, that, 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 listen, he was superb until he got injured. I think the injury and everything like that. That was a good game for him today, to play him, funny or not. It wasn't spectacular today. Yeah. He got around the pitch. He's worked, got, got 90 yeah. minutes under his belt. And he, he, he'll benefit from a game like which has not been physical and whatever. And just getting around, just getting some some extra minutes in those legs and, and all that, like for bigger and better games to come. So I think that that's for me, sometimes in a game, James, you can't excel. You just you can only play what's in front of you, and it, you know yeah. and that was a game for him today where he couldn't excel, but he's got minutes under his belt, and I, I think that'd be positive. I think that's a positive game. But he, listen, we're we're not kidding ourselves. He needs to uh, um, um, up his game. We know that. But ultimately, you know, that, that was OK today. You know, listen, if Partey's playing really well in a game like that today, then you've got problems, in my opinion. You know what I mean? He's just there to do right. it, which he's done. I get what you mean. So, yeah. so I'm not going to really say, like, you know, when it comes to Man City, he needs to be in, he needs to be on the top of his game then, like, yeah. That, that's a really good point, actually, because if you look at the whole back four in midfield, you know, Tommy Asu Tierney, did did well, but nothing spectacular because they didn't need to do anything spectacular. White had a bit of a shocker with the penalty incident, but otherwise was pretty solid. Gabriel does what Gabriel does. It's becoming normal this level of performance now. I don't know if he's given us less than an eight since he's you know come into the team. Um, 
And then you're right, Partey, if he were any busier or any better today, then he'd be actually saying, well, did Arsenal have more of a battle on their hands? Did he have to get to... So it's a very good point. I, do you know what? I, I, I second all of that. Let's... Um, we're going to round off the show very soon. Let's touch on Smith Rowe because Smith Rowe's in a weird position where he's been one of our best players this season. He scored seven goals in the league, level with Cristiano Ronaldo. But he's having to be content with the place on the bench because the balance is right in this team and there's no one you can drop. But I think this is a sign of a proper side when there's really good players on the bench through no fault of their own. You just can't drop what's there. And sometimes City will play with Foden on the bench because you just can't drop Gundogan, De Bruyne, Bernardo, Mares, Sterling, Gabriel Jesus, Farron Torres. And I think we're starting to show that there's a little bit of that in our team. Yeah, listen, you know, he's unlucky at this moment in time, but what he's doing, he's coming on, he's scoring goals, he's, you know, and and what I would say to him, if I, if I spoke to him, I'd just say to him that, you know, your time will come again, you know what I mean? You ain't, it, ain't, it ain't such a bad thing that you're having a little bit of a break at the moment. Maybe the injury come about because you was getting a bit of an overload of work. So just enjoy a little bit of a break coming on every... 20 minutes or so and that and, and I'm sure look, listen he'll play on Tuesday night if the game goes ahead get 90 minutes under his belt there and I'm sure with the games coming on Tuesday and, and uh, Saturday Tuesday Saturday it, it, he, they, they, they get a, a chance again and, and then you know still steal your place so yeah. I, I think that they, the good thing about um, Smith Rowe is he can play three or four positions yeah you know right. but listen if I wouldn't be worried if I was Smith Rowe. I'd be certainly more worried if I was someone like Pepe or Aubameyang because they ain't getting back into this team, right? You know, I, where where I think that you know he he come in before any of them. So um, sometimes you know it's not always great, but it could be a lot worse. So at the end of the day, he's, he's the first in the pecking order. Listen, today we've won quite comfortably, and he's on there, and he likes. You're not saying like there's a couple of players there that are sitting on the bench and would be you know loving to get a few more minutes but they're not so I would just say to him you know just keep doing what you're doing and and cream always rises to the top James yeah very true and and you know what I think this breaks a good thing for Smith I know he's scoring goals mm -hmm. and normally you look at players you say you've got to get them in the team you can't you know think how many times we've rushed Partey back but with Odegaard, Saka and Martinelli all in a, in a rich vein of form themselves um, Smith Rowe being so young you forget <laughs> We're, we're nearly, we're only like a week away from, you know, the anniversary of Smith Rowe's, you know, game against Chelsea. He came into the side, turned our fortunes around, turned our season around, you know, and, and it's very easy to almost forget that a year ago he wasn't who he is today. Yeah. And it's been a roller coaster year, you know, his debut for England, um, you know, taking the number 10 shirt, new contract, becoming one of Arsenal's most important players. And actually the guy needs to, just actually, in, it's going to sound weird because he'll be itching to play. But if I were him, I'd be sitting on the bench with a bit of a smile on my fa face going, it's been a good year. I'm actually I'm actually happy just to take a little rest. We've all had it, Lee, where we love our jobs. But sometimes you get one of those weeks where you, you it's bank holiday and you think, you know what? I'm happy for that extra day off. I think everything's good. Love coming to work, but I, I'm happy to have that extra day. And I think that's how Smith Rowe should take this right now. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm totally with you, like you know. I mean, I'm a big fan of his. It, you know, it it, 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 will happen for him because you know why I'm having too talented not for it to happen, like you know. And you're right; it's been a roller coaster year for him, from mm. from from where it has been. Not only has he cemented a place in Arsenal's team or squad or whatever, um, he's also played for England. I think that yeah. you know the expectation level goes up a little bit, and I also think that in being on the bench is you know. Is, is also helping the other players because they're thinking, well, I've got to play well. So they've got to step up. So he's even contributing when he's not contributing. So at this right. moment in time, you know, I think the rest are doing good. And it, 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 listen, it, he's too good a player not to get back into the team and, uh, and whatever. But, you know, this is it. Your standards drop. You ain't going to get back into this team. And that's the sort of attitude you need and want. Yep, completely enough to agree with that. Um, just a quick one. Are you worried about Tommy Asu's injury? Um, obviously, we haven't got a proper update yet, but big one. Well, yeah, no, if it's a calf strain, he's going to be out for two or three weeks. Uh, if it's just a kick on the back of the calf, it may be from that, that incident when he was going down that got, that got fouled. So sometimes you get a kick in the calf, they can be sore, a bit of ice on it, a bit of treatment, you know. Um, yeah. 
he won't play Tuesday, obviously, anyway. So that'll yeah. be, a, a, you know, like three, again, see, three or four days rest and we'll see, like, you know. So hopefully it's a, a more of a knock than a, than a muscular injury. This yeah, time. hopefully. We've got a uh, super chat from Faisal says, um, people need to leave the agenda aside and watch the game. What Xhaka and Partey do as a pair close together is what allows the ballers to play. Totally agree with that. That's what I said. You know what I mean? Them, them two are putting the platform on for the other guys like Ulegaard to perform. So, listen, there's always an agenda. Look, uh, there's going to be players now. People are going to turn around and say, oh, Mikel's great and everything like that. But when he loses, it's the players' fault. You know what I mean? When when he wins, it's Mikel's fault. When the players win or whatever, like, you know, ultimately, forget about all that. It's all about getting the, getting the job done. Mikel's done his job today. He's picked the team coach and all that. The players have performed. You need you need both. And um, for me, you know, look, there's no agenda or anything like you know. I'm 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 happy to give Mikel all the credit and 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 I'm going to say this now, James. I, I I'm still not convinced that he's going to be the man for me. But I tell you what, I hope he is because if he is, Arsenal winning games of football. That's all I care about. That is yeah. all I care about. I don't care about who's manager of this club. I don't care who's or whatever, if, if Smith Rowe's playing or, or not. You know what I mean? As long as we're winning and that's all that matters. And uh, Mikel at the moment I, has done a very, very bold thing and uh, something that I, I'm, I'm actually thinking about and going, do you know what? After that Everton game, you kept the same team in for the... I'm, 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 I'm a, that's, that's a bold decision. Uh, and it's a, it's a decision that tells me that he's confident with the players that he's got so you know and he's said to, to those players you've let me down but I'm still backing you now can you return the favour they have yeah. fantastic yeah agreed so final comments Netweed says um, uh, Smith Rowe simply a gem he says best loyal player I've seen since Cazorla um, I don't know what you mean by lo uh, loyal uh, interesting I wonder whether that maybe rules some other players out. Uh, Cut You Off says, that challenge by White was so poor, though. Yeah, I wasn't going to really talk about this. Um, it was a mistake. But, but um, you know, it was, a, it was a bad didn't, moment. Didn't cost us. Didn't, what was that, Lee? Didn't cost us. So yeah. that's it, you know what I mean? Like It would be like, like be uh, horrendous if it had cost us and we'd have ended up drawing the game, whatever. It didn't. So uh, learn from it, move on. Yeah, absolutely. There's a um, super chat here from Dave says, times like this that I miss Claude. Big future for Arsenal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously. Well, you know, uh, yes, definitely. You know, uh, it is a, a, a good time. Could be a good time to be supporting Arsenal. Who, who knows, you know, but uh, at the moment, listen, Claude would be very, very excited about those youngsters and particularly Martinelli and Saka. Yeah. He would be as well. Like, yeah. Never had the pleasure of... Um, meeting Claude, but I know that he is so unbelievably missed by yes. the whole footballing and Arsenal community. Um, Super Chat from Amaru says, um, perhaps uh, from Germany, great win. The team um, seemed to get good energy without Aubameyang. Perhaps he's a reason, perhaps that's the reason why we haven't been playing great. Merry Christmas. I don't think Aubameyang's the, the sole reason, but I definitely think we're a better side yeah, with well. Lacazette up top. Um, who he's done very well. Ah, we've got Turkish in. How are you doing, Turkish? All good, man. Just done my player ratings. Fan cam, all of that. Look out for that. Oh, well done. We're about to round off the show, but here you are. We may as well chat to you a bit. Yeah, well, oh, why not? I'm going to go then, like. Is that okay, like? Yeah, Absolutely. Can... Thanks for everything well, today, Lee. Christmas party, so over and out. And I'll still see you in the week, guys. Take care. See you in the week, mate. Bye-bye. 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 Um... Turkish, that was good today. We've been talking about Martinelli and the youngsters. Um, I thought, I, th I think that there's something about having Lacazette up top with, I know we're not Xhaka's biggest fan, but Xhaka and Partey, a bit more experience, a bit more just kind of do the kind of, not the nasty work, but, you know, the kind of things you got to do that allow the three to, to thrive. And then Smith Rowe comes on and gets another goal. Just terrific, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, I think... Arteta, his main struggle has been trying to find the formula in attack. And I think so far, albeit that FA Cup run towards the end, the formula to, you know, unleash Oba kind of worked. He picked off his chances. I think in terms of fluidity, the formula of Lacazette dropping in with Martinelli and Saka occupying more inside forward roles seems to be working quite yeah. well. 
Um, mm. And I think that's kind of the reason why the last few performances and results have looked better than even some of the ones in that 10-game streak because the formula seems to be working there. Um, mm -hmm. And hopefully we kick on with it. There's a, um, a really, really interesting super chat here from um, Face Al. says, only negative is Arteta needs to use his bench earlier. A wise man learns from other people's mistakes. Leicester missed top four twice due to burnout. That's a, it's a very, I'm not saying I agree with it, but it's a very interesting super chat. It's got me thinking that. What are your thoughts on all that? Well, yeah, especially if you add young players to that um, problem as well, it can re it can be more of a reality than you think. It's definitely something to keep an eye out on, but we're not a team that's got an abundance of depth and quality. So, the the for example, Tommy Asu today when he come off for of Cedric, you could see a drop in quality in that side. Yeah. You could see that lead started finding some success on that side, and that that's not only that position. But there's a few positions on the pitch where behind our starter, it's a, it's a massive drop-off. So it's it's a balance. We've got to use these players to make sure we're in and around a position we want to be in come March. But I also know that you risk burning them out because they're so young as well. It's, yeah. it's, and this is Arteta's problem to work out at the end of the day. Absolutely. Some really interesting comments, guys. Thank you so much. You're sparking a lot of really good um, discussion. Um Let's quick fire these Turkish. On Onfilo says Xhaka could have got red. Agree or disagree? This is, he, he could have, but I dis, I, I would have disagreed with it. You wouldn't want that to be a red. Yeah. No, I hear that. Um, Tauhid says shout out to Odegaard. Now me and you are not. I mean, I, I think a lot of people, Lee and a few others, I hear you know publicly kind of defending Odegaard, but we've always been here and said he's got quality. When we see others letting us down, and if he's one of them, like like the old Trafford penalty and all that, we don't really worry. We get frustrated about the moment. We don't really worry about him as a player. Why yeah. do you think that is? Because I see something with him. It's it's hard mm. to really put it into words. Sometimes yeah. you see a, you see a footballer the way he picks up the ball, the way he moves into a space, or the way he distributes, or. You know, there, there's a certain culture about it sometimes. Mesut Ozil had it. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying Odegaard's Mesut Ozil's level because Mesut Ozil hit some, you know, fantastic heights across his career. Werder Bremen, Real Madrid, Germany and us. But Odegaard has something about him where he has quality. Real, natural, raw quality. Um, he's slowly but surely getting used to the pace of the league as well. It's coming up to a year he would have been in this league. People forget yeah. the six-month loan from January too. And I think that that's part of the reason why we're seeing a better older guard. He's what he just turned 23. He's been a year in this league now. And let's be honest, he came into a side that was all over the gaff. Even us fans didn't know what to expect from this side, let alone him coming in. So I think what older guard brings is just a raw football culture that has partly been missing throughout the years at Arsenal Football Club as well. When he gets the ball, he's just he he's different to every single every single player around him. Emil Smith Rowe is so different to Martin Odegaard. You know, even though they're both fighting for the same positions, one brings a calmness, one brings a, an air of football culture, whereas the other brings timing into the box and goals from midfield, which is Smith Rowe. But then again, so does Odegaard. Hence him getting used to the league in a year. It's all mad. We've got eleven goals from Odegaard and Emil Smith Rowe in the Premier League. Add the assist right. to that two between them. I don't really know how many it is off the top. But they've been doing what they should be doing. And I say should be doing. I'd be happy with their output, even if they were mid-20s. These men are young, early 20s, and they're producing. So hopefully we can get it right around them as well. And mm -hmm. they can, you know, take the plaudits because they deserve it. Absolutely spot on. I mean, and then you can add what four from Martinelli. How many has Saka got this season in the league? Two, maybe, but still, but he's been contributing yeah. in many ways. So, you know, that's it's another six or 17 goals from those four in the Premier League. Um, just shows you how important they are. Um, what else have we got? Chica says, uh, Laka does so much on and off the ball. Uh, he fights, fights, fights for every ball. I agree with that. Um, Paul says a stupid foul by White, but Cedric's poor positioning causes the pass which White tried to stop. 
I, I, you know, me and Graham love to always sit down and break this down. So I'll have a little look for that. But um, it felt like they worked the left hand side a little too easily. In fairness, yeah, I think when, like I said, when Cedric came on, they saw an opportunity there and they got a goal out of it. So I guess they took it. Oh, we listen. Yeah. The game was gone by that time anyway. Um, heads were down, and albeit a little resurgence, picking the ball up out in their net and putting it back. Yeah, less of that. Just you yeah. know, get the get the job done. On Fido with the super chat says, if it were a big game, Xhaka definitely would have got a red. VAR was very sympathetic. You know what I think saves Xhaka? Um, it's what I said I didn't in the watch. I said I don't really like that stamp action. He's gone for the ball, and then because he cause once he's once the ball's kind of ricocheted and gone away, then it looks like a stamp. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's almost like if the ball had. When he starts that movement, the ball's there. By the end, it's not. So it kind of looks worse. I also think because it wasn't a, a two-footed thing, an ultra-high thing, because he got enough of the ball, you know, all that kind of saves him uh, ultimately. So I'm glad to see that the rest weren't quick to just whip out the red card. Though I've got to say, if that were the other way, I probably would be calling for it. But just one of those. Um, going to end on a slightly sour note, um, but worth mentioning because this notification came up and wanted to mention this at the end of the show so uh breaking news from sky sports that the premier league are investigating alleged racist abuse aimed at the arsenal bench from lead supporters during the first half of the match at ellen road um we had a super chat from someone explaining that that's what rob holding was speaking to the fourth official about and the referee um Man. let's hope it's dealt with properly and that justice is served on that because um, fair play to the Arsenal bench and Rob Holding for doing something about it, first and foremost. Um, and the Premier League have come out quickly and said that they're going to investigate it. Let's hope um, that whatever bloody justice looks like with this kind of thing, let's just hope it's done. Yeah, um, let's hope it's not wordplay from the from the Premier League. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Tackle it properly. Um, right, I think we're going to round off the stream, but any final thoughts, Turkish? Listen, fourth, four points clear. We're fourth at Christmas. Um, you, you, if you told me that coming into the season, I would have said, "All right, I'll take it." So, all right, I'll take it. We move. Can I be? Can I be Mister Moni, Mister Mister Negative? And you can because I'm used to that role. So, why? Well, not? let me ask you: Is it? Is it slightly, slightly watered down by the fact that there's a load of game in hands, or are you just saying, "Nope, fourth, delighted." It's slightly watered down, but I'd rather the points on the board than the games in hand. Sure. You know, you look at Tottenham's, I don't see 12 points for them there. I don't even see nine points for them there. So, you know, we hope that Liverpool get the job done tomorrow. I look at Man United and I think, who knows? The last time we saw Man United, they scraped it against Norwich with a penalty. You know, yeah. Ralph Ragnick, a lot's been said about him, but who knows? All we can do is wait to find out. All I can do is look at the table and see us fourth and say, you know, I'll take it. Yeah, absolutely. We've listened, we didn't choose this path, so <laughs> make the best of it. <laughs> um, absolutely. Final super chat from Ben says, Big up Rob Holding for calling that out. And I absolutely agree. Uh, and then another one's flown in last minute from Omphilia says, Shaka made forward pass. Turkish, how do you feel? You lot are trolls, man. You lot are absolute trolls. He, we have been so, like, uh, we have, we've talked up everyone. Everyone, I've I've had it as well, Turkish. All all comment section. You're all not everyone. Some of you, some of you have sparked some great discussion in the comment section today. I really enjoyed this last hour. We've been live, um, but some of the, some of the comments and questions, like, what do you want from us? But anyway, listen, we will move. We're fourth. <laughs> We're happy. We move. Yeah. yeah, agreed, agreed. But yes, Shaka did well. No, nah, like, I listen. You you lot want to know? I gave Shaka an eight in player rating. So there you have it. There we go. There we go. You can all get off our back. Why do you not have to end it like that, man? We, <laughs> we, you, know, you said in your super chat, so we do. We, you know, we we do you the respect of reading them out. But any more like these, we probably ain't going to read them all out. But um, no, well done, Arsenal today. Four-one win. I'm going to end with this and just say, if City or Liverpool had this task against the same leads and the same position, they'd be expected to batter them, and they would have. We were expected to do something, and today we did. So well done, Arsenal, doing the job. Yeah. Guys, we'll be back tomorrow. No, no, not tomorrow. We'll be back 
yeah, video's coming out tomorrow. We'll be back on Monday as well to break this down on Tactical Insight. We'll be doing the Bias Premier League as well as building up to Sunderland on Tuesday. Hopefully everything goes ahead because there are doubts, obviously, with everything that's going on. But hopefully we have more football to bring you early next week. Well done, Arsenal. Thanks for joining me, Turkish. Thanks, everyone, who's tuned into everything today. We'll be back soon. Peace.